Hello, thank you for tuning in to another video from the $5 Journey YouTube channel. I'm Anomaly. Um, I want to talk today about income versus wealth. Income compared to wealth. Income versus wealth. All right, there's, um, there have been a couple of articles that I've seen uh, kind of just come across the screen. And um, I felt the need to really address this. Sometimes we use the words inter interchangeably. Sometimes we think that they have the same meaning to them. Um, but actually, um, if we don't have a real clear understanding of the differences between income and wealth, that could really get us into a uh, not so good place as far as our finances go. All right, so I wanna talk briefly today about that. Um, income, all right, now I, I set something up here, um, but each one actually needs a little bit more of an explanation than what I put in here, but this is kind of just an easy you know, way to kind of think of things, okay? So income versus wealth. So income basically is what comes in, all right? That's money that comes in, that's your cash flow, that's your job, that's your, um, your, your, your business, your rental income, um, dividends, you know, anything, any, any monetary stuff that, that comes in, all right? That's, that's what income is, all right? So what comes in, all right, is income. Now, wealth I have is what stays in, but um, it's, so kind of what that implies is that, it, you know, money comes in and it just stays there. But it's more involved than that, actually. So wealth is not only your cash flow that comes in, your income that comes in and stays there, but wealth is also what you've accumulated along the way. Wealth could be handed down from one generation to the next or, you know, through an insurance policy or, you know, through the deeding of a house or, you know, some sort of real estate or something like that. So that's, that's wealth. Wealth is something that, that you have that is, um, uh, that is, you know, if in the case of real estate, let's say you, let's say you buy a home that's, um, uh, you know, you, you buy a home that's say worth $200,000. You get a $200,000 loan on the home. And after a couple of years, you have, the home is worth $400,000. Okay, so you bought it for 200,000. It's now worth 400,000. And um, so you would have, you would have right there alone, you would have had accumulated $200,000 in wealth. All right, $200,000 in wealth. Now, if you went and you, say, took a loan on that extra $200,000, so, um, you know, let's say you have a $200,000 loan on that $400,000 house, then you take an additional $200,000 loan, and let's say you spend it on stuff, you're going to vacations, you're, you know, I don't know, buying the latest designer, whatever, and you spend all that $200,000, well, now you no longer have $200,000 in wealth, all right? Um, so that's kind of what wealth is. Wealth is something that you, that can come in, that you keep, something that can be passed down, something that has some sort of value to it, all right? Um, income, like I said, you, you guys know what that is. Now, um, one thing that can happen is there can be, you can have a lot of income and not have a lot of wealth. Okay, so let's say, um, Let's say I make five hundred thousand dollars a year, right? That's that's my income. Five hundred thousand dollars a year. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing it big, and I, you know, I have my five hundred thousand dollar a year job or my five hundred thousand dollar a year business, you know, and you know, I go out and I buy, you know, the, the latest car, and I get myself a nice big old house, and um, I buy myself the best wardrobe, and you know, of course, I'm taking some some really wonderful vacations, and I'm living the life, right? And let's say, so I'm bringing in $500,000 a year. My income is $500,000, but let's say what goes out is $500,000. Well, my wealth is zero, zero, okay? So your wealth is zero because I, I there's nothing that I'm keeping. There's nothing that stays in from that, all right? Let's say, I, you know, even if I, you know, with that five hundred thousand dollars a year, I buy like a nice house, okay? And I, it's 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 a house. It costs three million dollars, okay? Let's say I, you know, I get a loan for three million dollars on the house. 
and um, the but that the the house doesn't have any equity in it. All right, it's a three million dollar house, and it's worth three million dollars. Okay, so I still have zero as far as my wealth. Okay, so it's big fat zero. So I I, I have a high income. I have a a lot of money coming in, and I said five hundred thousand. It could be five million dollars per year. It could be five. Hundred million dollars per year, but if I'm spending five hundred million dollars a year, like with debt or with, you know, whatever stuff, and I'm not putting any of that money aside to grow or to save or to further invest or whatever, then that means that I have no wealth accumulation. Okay, so I haven't got, so I don't have wealth. I just have an income. All right, that's where you know a lot of times um, athletes, um, you know people in the music or film industry, you know, different ones, they may have a lot of income coming in, but you'll often hear about them filing for bankruptcy and things like that. It's because they don't have a lot of wealth, all right? Because, you know, they may have five million or $500 million coming in, but they also spend that amount of money on whatever their lifestyle is. That's why, you know, people think, oh yeah, I want to, you know, I want to, Go to a good college and I want to go into medical school, right? And, you know, while in medical school, you know, you, you rack up the expenses. You have like $200,000, $300,000 in loans. And then you get out and you, you know, you're making your $300,000 a year salary. And then, you know, so you have your loan and then you have your undergraduate loan. And then, of course, you're making $300,000 a year. You're a doctor. You're living it up, you know, and, you know, you... Of course, you gotta get a nice house. Okay, you gotta get a nice house. You gotta get a nice car. Of course, your your uh, your spouse has to have a wonderful car. Your kids have to go to the best prep schools around, right? And you know, so at the end of the day, right? At the end of the year, you know, you have um, yeah, you've taken in three hundred thousand dollars, but now you've spent out like four hundred thousand dollars. So. Um, so that's three hundred thousand dollars plus probably another hundred thousand dollars in debt that you had to rack up over the course of the year, right? So that's how we end up getting ourselves into a lot of trouble because of the lifestyle that we that we choose to live, right? You have money coming in, right, but you don't keep any of that money, right? You don't gain any wealth, and the stuff that you buy um, has no value to it. When I say no value, I'm not talking about sentimental value. I'm not talking about emotional stuff. I'm saying that there's no monetary value, so that you you have zero wealth, all right. So, um, as opposed to a wealthy person who may have a salary or a cash flow, let's say, of twenty thousand dollars a year, let's say, or thirty thousand dollars a year, but maybe they had stuff handed down or pass passed over, such as real estate, such as. Um, you know, money through uh, insurance, you know, some sort of annuity or something along those lines. Maybe they've taken from their, you know, $20,000 a year, $30,000 a year and taken 10% and investing that. And that money that they put aside grows every year and they do that over a long period of time. And, you know, they get to a point where, yeah, they have their twenty or $30,000 a year salary, their income, but their wealth may have grown to $600,000, right? And then they take some of that money, they invest it even more. So now, what would I rather have? Would I rather have, you know, you know, would I rather make $200,000 and have $20,000 in wealth? Or would I rather make um, $20,000 but have $200,000 in wealth? What do you guys think? Me, I'd rather make $20,000 and have $200,000 in wealth because with that $200,000, that's all that I, that's what I keep, right? And I could have that $200,000 making me money every year when I sleep, when I'm on vacation, when I'm, you know, I have a sick day, I got a call out from work. That money is still working. That wealth is still building. It's still accumulating. Um, with the income, you can have $20,000 you know, you could, you know, you could be at minimum wage, you could be at poverty levels, you know, and you could make that kind of money. Um, maybe it'll stay in, maybe it won't. You can, so you can go from there, you could make $150,000 a year. You can make $250,000 a year and you will have expenses that are just as high and you don't accumulate any kind of wealth from it. 
So, um, so it's really the five dollar journey really touches on both, right? Seeing ways to increase your income, but not spend that income foolishly, but rather take that increased income and transfer it over into wealth, right? With those financial vehicles that we talk about, REITs, mutual funds. Um, well, the five dollar journey book doesn't mention about insurance, annuities, and things like that. But that's there also. Real estate, um, you know, business ownership, business startups. Okay, investing in a, in a business that's going to give you some sort of return. Okay, so those those kinds of things. That's how you that's how you build wealth. The five dollar journey talks about both of those things: income and wealth. And you know, I know sometimes it could be you know a little discouraging because you're trying to get a handle on all this stuff. Maybe some of this stuff is new to you. You know, it takes a little bit of discipline. It takes a little bit of a mindset change, right? Um, you know, some of us may just be used to looking at finances as far as just income, okay? Yeah, I wanna raise from making $8 an hour to $9 an hour because I wanna increase my income. And it, you know, when we increase to $9 an hour, well, then we start spending more money. Or we increase to, $90 an hour and we start spending more money, right? So you, what you want to do is you want to make sure that with that increase, all that, all that extra is going in towards building wealth, all right? And that's what we talk about on the $5 journeys and, and some of the other videos. So don't get discouraged. Don't be dismayed, all right? Um, the book and the videos, all right? And some of the articles that I post, you know, talk about all those kinds of things, all right? Remember, it's not a sprint but it's a journey, okay? $5 at a time, all right? Stay tuned for more videos. Um, leave comments below. Like the video if that's your thing. All right, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, take care.